Leader of the Third Party. Uh, th thank you, Honourable Speaker. I, uh, I appreciate the Minister for Housing uh, talking about supporting the most vulnerable. I think that that is the role of, of government. We're staring down a summer of more wildfires, potential extreme heat. In a couple of days, we're expecting 35 degree days in the middle of May. This government has had six years, three record-setting wildfire seasons, a devastating heat dome, and unprecedented floods to understand just how serious climate disasters are. Warning people that it's hot won't help when people have nowhere to go. It's this government's job to protect the lives, and in particular, as the minister says, support the most vulnerable. My question, Honourable Speaker, is to the Premier. Where can people go to get out of the heat, and how does he expect the most vulnerable, including the elderly and people with disabilities, to get there? Minister of Housing. Thank you so much, Honourable Speaker. Um, I, I really appreciate the member's question. It is uh, certainly top of mind for us. Uh, given uh, that we are seeing warmer temperatures. Uh, I can share with the member that uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I met with uh, doctors uh, from across the province uh, talking about how we can collectively uh, help the most vulnerable people and make sure we have policies in place, not only in the short term, but also long term policies to support people through what will be, I uh, suspect, warmer temperatures as we move forward. I can share with the member that uh, part of the conversations we talked about enhanced education and supports for operators to check on most helpful, uh, help uh, for vulnerable residents. Uh, we uh, have a, a plan right now around distribution of cooling supplies like fans and ACs. Um, we have uh, specific cooling rooms uh, in, at sites uh, within buildings. Uh, and work is being done right now adding window films and external shading and retrofitting from some sites that, with heat pumps, Honourable Speaker. Uh, but we also, I think, talked about what we should be doing over the long term. And I can share with the member that we talked about updates to BC Housing's design guidelines, construction standards to integrate passive and active cooling measures measures to better uh, support ventilation and, and filtration systems. So uh, I agree with the member, a lot of work hap has to happen. We have been doing that work and we'll continue to do it. Leader of the Third Party Supplemental. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. I appreciate the response from the Minister. Uh, and as he knows, and we all know this, this weekend, a heat wave is coming. 619 people died in the 2021 heat dome. Last year, the chief coroner recommended giving air conditioners to the most vulnerable, the elderly, those with disabilities, those who can't move with ease. But this government has missed the deadline to review that request and has done very little of, that's new to save lives with the heat that we're about to receive. And I appreciate the, the, the minister's comments on what is coming, but we are three, two years since the heat dome and the recommendations that came out of that, and we've missed that deadline to review. My question, again, is to the Premier. He went on a spending spree earlier this year. Why did that not include air conditioners for those who are most at risk of heat-related death? Minister of Health. Well, uh, thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. And in fact, as members of the House will know, substantial action is taken in addition to all the steps uh, referred to by the Minister of Housing with respect to emergency response. There's a very significant support for all our dispatch services of all kinds, including those passed in supplementary estimates in this House. We've added in 2021 to BC EHS 539 permanent regular full-time paramedic positions, further 222 in November of 2022, new ambulances, new air ambulances, Honourable Speaker. A new system of heat alert and response system called BC HARS was put in place in June of 2022 in advance of that, that season's uh, hot days. And in fact, there were six alerts last year, Honourable Speaker. We've, uh, we've set, put in place uh, 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 the health effects of anomalous temperatures <coughs> coordinating committee, which does this work through the BC CDC and health authorities and other leaders, including the First Nations Health Authority. We've added significant cooling capacity across our long-term care system using our own uh, supports and supports for the federal government. And we continue to work to improve things. We know, Honourable Speaker, that the effects of climate change on people's health um, at all seasons of the year, but particularly in summer, can be profound. And that's why we are taking action on every front to deal with it. 